Episode 43, Should Be Conceiving My Cubs. The meat was already fully cooked. Roger and Blair ate it with gusto, while Stephen sat at the side and watched. Blair felt bad and politely asked Stephen, Do you want to try? Stephen was a snake beast man, and Blair had never seen him eat hot food in the one month that she spent with him in the jungle. She thought that Stephen would reject her, but to her surprise, he agreed. Okay, Stephen said. You can eat from my bowl, then. The meat's not as hot. I didn't touch this side of the meat. Blair reached out to pass the bowl to Stephen, but only slightly since she was sitting on his body. Roger couldn't stand it any longer. He cut off a large chunk of the roasted meat and threw it into a clean stone bowl. Eat this. Acting as if he didn't hear him, Stephen picked up a piece of meat from Blair's bowl and placed it in his mouth. Roger was so furious that his nostrils flared rapidly. Blair quickly said to Roger, Let the meat in that bowl cool first. Roger turned his head away. Stephen chewed on the meat a couple of times before his long red eyebrows furrowed together and his handsome face scrunched up and turned pink. After swallowing the food in his mouth with much difficulty, Stephen moved his tail from under Blair's butt, hurriedly mumbled, I'll go drink some water, and rushed out the door. Blair sat on the cold, hard floor. Stephen? With a splash, Stephen threw himself into the water, creating huge ripples as he did so. Blair looked at Roger in confusion. What happened to him? Roger was instantly amused and burst out laughing. (laughs) It must be the red spikes. Chili? Blair looked down at the meat in her bowl. Roger always prepared extra spicy roasted meat for her as she liked spicy food. Now came the question, could snakes eat spicy food? Roger laughed so much that his stomach hurt. He held his stomach with one hand and banged the floor with the other. That was so funny. Tomorrow I'm going to pick a whole bunch of red spikes and make the food so spicy that he can't stand it. Blair couldn't help but smile and gently kicked Roger with her bare foot. You're gloating at his misery. Is your body okay? Roger was initially going to reply that he was okay. No female liked a weak male, especially one that got injured in a fight to decide his status in the family. Admitting that he was hurt would mean that he was useless. However, after recalling how gentle Blair was towards him in the morning, Roger immediately changed what he was about to say. My chest still hurts. He just attacked me out of nowhere and I wasn't even ready. Blair had an apologetic look on her face as she reached out to caress Roger's chest. I'm really sorry. It was clear from Blair's tone of voice that she was apologizing for Stephen. Roger's heart, which didn't really hurt at first, suddenly ached, and he suddenly tasted blood in his mouth, just like when he was sent flying. Blair only accepted the snake beast man and hadn't accepted him yet. His fight with Stephen was a complete joke. Roger suddenly roughly pushed Blair's hand away, then reached out to the roasted meat and clawed off a piece of it. As he wolfed down the meat, he proclaimed, I won't leave you, and don't try to drive me away now that he's here. This is how you repay me for saving you. If you really hate me, we can talk after we copulate. It was already established that males had the right to pursue females they saved when out in the wild, and females couldn't reject them. However, females still had the final say. If they really detested one of their partners, they could cancel the spousal relationship. And if the male insisted, the female had no right to reject mating with them. However, very few males would do this for their happiness for the rest of their lives was at stake. Blair felt helpless. So she could only accept two husbands? Although Stephen had forced it on her, his genuine feelings did move her. If he hadn't brought her to the forest, the two of them would perhaps live happily ever after in the city of Beastmen. She really wasn't planning on getting another husband to satisfy her emotional needs. Today, she had a vague taste of what it felt like to be caught in a dilemma. 
She felt as though she had transmigrated to the ancient times into the body of a government official with several wives and concubines. So strange. Stephen, in his snake form, came swimming back from the river. Previously, when Stephen was brought into the house by Roger, everyone saw that, so this time no beast men came to surround him. You're back. Blair stood up, turned her head, and said to Roger, Can you lend him an animal skin skirt? That animal skin skirt Stephen wore when he came had burst when he transformed into his beast form to beat up Roger. The house wasn't big enough, and there was a fire in the center, so Stephen's beast form was easily burned by the fire. No way, Roger refused immediately. Stephen also flicked out his tongue at the same time, repulsed by the idea, his red eyes filled with disdain. Blair could only let it rest. Stephen transformed his upper body into a human form. Because his body size had shrunk, the water on his body splashed to the ground instantly. He strode into the house in those long legs of his. Roger sprung up and circled his arms around Blair's waist, shifting her away. Abominable. The snake beast man actually has two. In the future, when we copulate, he will have one more chance than me. It suddenly struck him. Is this the reason why the snake beast men don't live in the village? Did they incur the wrath of other beast men because of this and so are ostracized? If that's the case, that's great. Stephen picked up his skirt and turned his head to look towards the bedroom. After a moment's hesitation, he still entered nonetheless. Roger quickly followed him in. Pointing at the pile of grass, he declared, Blair and I sleep on that pile of grass. If you wish to sleep on the grass, go pluck it yourself. It wasn't Stephen's intention to occupy Roger's nest. He asked, Do you have a fish bone? Roger found a thick fish bone needle from his wooden case and tossed it to Stephen, standing about ten steps away from him. Stephen accurately caught it, then walked to a corner and sat down. He plucked a strand of hair and began mending his clothes. Blair, who was standing in the main room, held a hand to her forehead. The sense of having a harem was getting stronger and stronger. She started clearing up the mess in the house. All that was left of the barbecued meat was the bone structure, and it wasn't heavy. However, she had just lifted it up when someone seized it from her. Blair, how can you be doing this? It's all that snake's fault, else I would have tidied up the house. Roger took the animal bone structure from her with one hand, then said, These are not chores that a female should be doing. Blair, you go play with the bamboos and let me take care of tidying up. She was inventing stuff here, all right. Perhaps she could even benefit the beast man world. With no television and phone, she was bored to death. Now she wasn't even allowed to do something to kill her boredom. Roger went out with the animal bones. There was a trash pit outside each and every house for them to dispose of their garbage. The beast men would burn the garbage regularly, then pour it outside the city of beast men. The thing Blair felt most satisfied with this stone house was the fact that there were two rooms, which made it convenient for her to bathe. When Roger was in the bedroom, she would bathe in the main room. When Roger was in the main room, she would bathe in the bedroom. As for Roger's occasional peeking from a dark spot, Blair had grown used to it, so she simply ignored it now. In any case, she always bathed with her back facing the bedroom door. But today, Stephen was in the bedroom, and Roger had slyly stuck around in the main room. Blair didn't dare order Stephen, so she could only instruct Roger, I want a shower. You go in. Roger said, I don't want to stay in the same room with the snake. Let's sleep in this room today. The helpless Blair was prepared to bathe with her back facing Roger when she suddenly heard swoosh sounds next to her. Right away, she knew that was the friction sound Stephen's body made against the ground. Indeed, the next second, Roger was heard letting out an agonizing cry. Roar! Roger was tossed into the bedroom. In half-beast form, Stephen stood at the door and said to Blair, Go ahead and bathe. Blair was speechless. But you're still here. 
How is it any different from just now? All right, there was a difference. That was, Stephen had already observed her naked body before and likely wouldn't peek. Hence, Blair removed her clothes and started bathing. Stephen lowered his head and continued mending his animal skin skirt. The fur of this animal skin skirt was a little thick, so it took quite some strands of hair to mend. In order to use fewer strands of hair, he mended it very slowly. Now there was a leopard vying for his female with him. His beast form wasn't as likable as the leopards in the eyes of females, so he had to protect his human form advantage. This head of red and long hair was perhaps the thing that females found most attractive about him. Roger, who was forced to stay in the bedroom, gnashed his teeth in anger. Yet, no matter how furious he was, he was no match for the snake. He retrieved some clean cotton from the box and meticulously tore them into long shreds. Stephen suddenly flicked out his tongue. He raised his head and walked towards her. You're injured. Stephen anxiously looked at the naked Blair from head to toe. Blair bent over, her hand holding the towel froze in midair, not sure whether she should cover her chest with it or continue bathing. Why are you here? Get out! Stephen flicked out his tongue again, and his gaze shifted to the pile of clothes Blair set aside. The bloodstains on the cotton amidst her clothes gave Stephen the answer he was looking for. Delighted, Stephen excitedly grabbed Blair's shoulders. You've started going into heat. Forced to face Stephen, Blair used her arms to block her chest. I guess so. She was pregnant with your babies, Roger suddenly butted into the conversation. He also walked into the main room. But not anymore. Babies. Stephen turned his head in doubt. Blair's body froze. Great. Both of them came in. Why did they have to talk about this when she was showering? Stephen glanced at Blair's expression and instantly understood what was going on. His lips arched into a slight smile and he tapped his cold finger on Blair's nose. You're so clever. It was too dark in the house. Although Blair couldn't quite see Stephen's expression, she could sense his relief. I guess he's glad I kept his method of becoming mates with someone a secret. You're not angry? We made her abort your babies, Roger said, feeling strange. I don't care. In any case, we will have babies very soon. Stephen raised Blair's chin and asked gently, Right? Blair furrowed her brows. Roger's fur exploded. He raged. She should be conceiving my cubs next. It's my turn. It's my turn. 